Today, let's talk about balance from a little bit of a different perspective. Yeah. You should see it from this side. Life balance is a concept that is intriguing and desirable and also completely unrealistic. I mean, even now, look up here, and you'll see I'm not balanced. I'm constantly making adjustments and corrections to protect myself on this precarious platform. And after all this work, after all this effort, I haven't really gone anywhere. I'm still in the same place. You see, folks, we're engaged in the art the process of balancing throughout our life, which is making those adjustments, making decisions, making corrections over time, responding to opportunities and challenges. But balance is something you never attain, and yet you've been told that this is the ultimate goal, the ultimate purpose to achieve life balance. I googled life balance this morning, and there were 367 million results. Think of that. 367 million ideas or observations or opinions on how you can attain the unattainable. And so we beat ourselves up in pursuit of this idea of balance, thinking that if we work hard enough or, or, or smart enough or long enough, that we can get to this moment where it all evens out. And I'm here to tell you it isn't going to happen. You will never achieve perfect balance. And along the way, we beat ourselves up with the guilt and we restrict our opportunities. And the pursuit of balance, I think, actually is a negative impact on our lives. So I want to liberate you from that today with a new philosophy, a new approach. And I encourage you not to live your lives on balance, but rather off balance on purpose. Off balance on purpose. Because off balance is your reality. And that's a good thing. You have to be off balance in order to learn, in order to grow, in order to love or serve others or improve yourself in any meaningful way. The question is, are you off balance in response to your world or are you off balance on purpose, deliberate, intentional, and connected to a sense of meaning, purpose, mission that you bring to what you do every single day? I mean, that's what causes change for yourself, for your family, your community, for your world. Purpose. The greatest organizations and the, and the most effective individuals are those that have learned to harness the power of purpose and leverage that for amazing results. And in that respect, while that handstand is a model for remaining and maintaining at the status quo, you know, off balance on purpose, change transformation would be more like a backflip. You know, launching yourself into uncertainty when you can't even necessarily see where you're going with energy, with commitment, and with drive. Hope! Yeah! <laughs> well, thank you. This may, uh, this may surprise you, but when I first learned to, when I was 11 years old and I was exploring these ideas, I was what they called a hyperactive kid. <laughs> No, I'm totally serious. <laughs> and it was at that age I found purpose in an unlikely place. It was at the King Richard's Renaissance Fair in Bristol, Wisconsin, when I watched a juggler. I shot, saw his act six times in a row. This guy was amazing. His name's Mike Von Druska. And after the last show of the day, he had noticed I'd been there. And he said, kid, would you like to learn to juggle? Sometimes we find purpose, you see, when others take an interest in us and give us an opportunity to grow. I wanted to succeed as much for his belief in me as for my own benefit. And when I engaged the process, I loved it. I remember that moment when it finally clicked in with three balls. It felt amazing. But almost immediately, a new question came to mind. What was that? Of course. Well, how do I do four? I am obviously so ready. <laughs> so I got the fourth ball, and I tried it. But I tried it the same way I knew how to do three. They collided. They hit the ground. It was a disaster. And I went back to my mentor, frustrated the next weekend, and I said, Mike, what's going on? He said, Dan, listen, when you add the fourth ball, you need to learn a new pattern. You see, throughout life, we engage patterns, patterns of thinking, patterns of action, patterns of interaction with others. We experiment, we find what works, and then we protect it, we defend it, 
against everything else. And you know what? If we want to grow beyond our abilities, we have to transcend our current patterns. What Mike showed me is that when the balls cross with three balls, it's not the same with four. With even numbers, you hold them a little longer. It's actually two on that side, two on this side. The basic patterns with even numbers do not cross your body. Of course, unless you're doing some kind of fancy tricks or maneuvers, but the basic patterns stay on the same side. And when he showed me that, just like you, I went, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> And I went home armed with this new knowledge and I tried it again. And this time, it still didn't work. <laughs> now, I hadn't practiced it enough to make it my own. I hadn't worked hard enough and dropped enough and picked up those drops to confirm my commitment. But a funny thing happened. As I continued to struggle, as I continued to put forth the effort with four, I started to notice something unexpected. My three ball juggling was getting really, really good. Truth is, I never really got the hang of four until I tried five. If you think what you're doing now is difficult, it's time to try something harder. You must be off balance in order to learn. Now, five balls goes back to a crossing pattern. Check it out. So instead of having one in the air at all times, there's three in the air at all times. But what jugglers know and what neuroscientists understand about the human mind is that we don't truly multitask. We can't do it all at once. We handle one thing at a time quickly and perform what's called the quick switch between our thoughts and our objectives. For example, when one of these balls is out of my hand, it's also out of my what? Yeah, it's out of my control, it's doing its own thing. I need to disengage that one and engage a new target above my other hand. And the key is this, no matter how much is going on, five balls or seven, there's still space between the throws and catches. Space between your throws and catches, your thoughts and your actions. Right? Or what you were doing and what you are doing next. Or what you hear and how you choose to respond. And it's in those spaces that we reclaim control of our lives. You know, it's not about increasing your pace because life speeds right up with you. Ironically, by slowing down even a little, you begin to notice those spaces, those opportunities. And they expand for you. Here's the five ball pattern. And as you look up here and you see the five balls in the air... What I want to know from all of you is this. Can you see that pattern? Can you see what it looks like? Can you imagine it? Can you? Yeah? Some of you. Not too many, though. So you know what? This is Ted. We need to uh, employ some Ted Red and some technology. Lights, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now can you see the pattern? Yeah, some say it looks like the wings of a butterfly. I see an infinity sign reflecting your infinite potential. While our patterns are constantly changing and growing, it's the patterns that engage us and drive us forward. Lights, please. Yeah? <laughs> so why, why do I tell you this? Well, here's why. Because a moment ago, you just saw a five-sphere pattern in the air. I want to talk about your five spheres of success, your life. Check out the screen. You see, this model will serve you personally, but also professionally as you lead others, as you try to understand what's, what matters most. Your work, first sphere, your relationships, your health, your spiritual growth, and your personal interests, the things you just love to do. These are your five spheres of success. First, there's your work, right? Your professional pursuits and commitments. Working on school, working ultimately toward a career. Whether you're an entrepreneur and you're starting your own business, or you're looking for the right organization that really feels purposeful to you, how can we lead others and, and work to become the best at our chosen profession? Well, we have to reconcile our family, our relationships, our friends, the people we care about, people we care for. And you know what balance books tell you? Protect your time compartmentalize your life so that they don't overlap, so that there's not too much time in each area. Ridiculous, right? Because there's not enough time to do that, and they're constantly intersecting where it matters most, in your thinking, in your decisions. How about this sphere, your health? That's how you fuel your pattern, right? What do you put in your body? How do you move your body? How do you rest your body so that you have the energy to move forward with purpose through life? Health-related goals are vitally important. And you know what? Not only do we hope to improve ourselves physically, but also spiritually. 
And while this means different things to different people, depending on your own beliefs, your practices, your spiritual principles, for some it means just getting active, getting involved in community outreach or philanthropy. Well, the key is, if you want to live a life on purpose, you need to know what that is and live in congruence with your spiritual purpose and seek to know something larger than you. The fifth sphere is this one here, I mentioned it earlier, your personal interests, your hobbies, your joys, your passions, the things you just love because they make you you. They make you unique. These are the five spheres. And as you can see, they're always interacting in this model. I want you to remember this. I want you to think about this because the pattern that's created by the way they move together is an infinity sign reflecting your infinite potential. You never, you know, reach your full capacity to learn. You never reach your full potential because you can always know more in each of these areas. And there's an infinite way that you can define your life. For each one of us, we can live a life that's extraordinary and unique and full of passion and, and service to others. But yet, if you were to freeze frame it at any one moment like this, it doesn't look balanced at all. You know, there's some things in your hands, other things totally out of your reach, and, and you know, that's, that's okay because it's still connected, connected to you. It's your pattern. And more importantly, they're connected to one another. And this is the key. This is what I believe, is if we construct our life from the inside out with these lifelines, like this. If I were to draw a lifeline from work to relationships, that implies the question, well, how do you connect those? What would that look like? We, we work to provide for the people we care about. We go back to our relationships to get this juice to, to bring back into work. And in the flow of life, there's times when it makes sense and it's close together. And other times, it's totally stretched to the limit. Like for me in my life, as a professional speaker and author, I'm on the road a lot. I have two kids. My son, Eddie, is 14. My daughter, Maggie, is 10. So there's a lot of time that I'm away. But throughout their life, we've strengthened that lifeline by bringing them with us you know, on different experiences, by talking about my clients and my audiences, what I'm learning along the way. And see, when I bring them along on a trip and involve them in the show in some way, they're growing and they're connected. And also that way, all their travel, clothing, and food is tax deductible. <laughs> <coughs> so how can you or how can your organization find ways to capitalize on this, to, to incorporate family into this concept of work? Right? So that it becomes a purposeful pursuit. In total, there are 10 li lifelines. How about your work and your health? Does your work support your desire to be healthy or challenge it in some way? And if so, what are you going to do about that? Hey, the greatest organizations understand the power of wellness, the power of uh, fi fitness initiatives and challenges. How about work and spiritual growth? Right? You know, are you practicing your spiritual principles in the context of going to school or going to your job? Because that's what it's all about. And also bringing that corporate philosophy of philanthropy. Interests. Working in a career that interests you. Right? Or bringing your personal interest into the workplace. Relationships. That share your, your desire to be healthy, grow spiritually, and you share your interests with the people you care about too. You see, it's all connected. You can get healthy. You can grow spiritually while you do things you love to do. I, this is why I go mountain unicycling as my workout routine. <laughs> it's a great workout, trust me. And I do it with my buddy Bobby Coggins, so we've got a friendship component too. When life's in the moment and in motion like this, hey, the shapes and forms are constantly changing. But a connected life pattern will help you sustain those twists and detours as you move through life. It really will. And so you look for those opportunities, those, those options which are in your hand, the possibilities are truly infinite. And again, the greatest organizations that get ranked among the best places to work are those that look at this and say, how can we create an environment where people don't feel like they are choosing between life and work? It's not either or, it's all of the above. To take this to another level, uh, I have my son Eddie with me today. How you doing, son? Tax deductible. <laughs> Stand here, buddy. All right. We're going to go up another notch to the top. Now, when I, thank you, when I first tried one of these, I learned a lot about balance extremely quickly. First of all, I tried it like this. I thought I'd be closer to the ground just to be careful. But what I realized is if you focus on the ground, that's where you go immediately. <laughs> the only way to feel a sense of control 
in an off-balance environment in which you live is to elevate your focus, to elevate your vision, to be able to look farther than others are willing to go. And then you tell me, what's my first move to go forward? What's the first thing I have to do? What was it? Lean forward, right? Off balance on purpose. What you do on a six-foot unicycle is you lean forward, you start falling toward your face, and then you chase your body with the unicycle, so hopefully you don't get to your face. <laughs> it's scary, all right? It makes you a little uncomfortable. But here's the deal. If you limit yourself to what's comfortable, you deny yourself what's possible. If you're unwilling to lean into the uncertainty, if you're apprehensive about change and growth, you may start going backward. Or maybe I'll just stay where I am because I'm already successful, I'm already good. I don't want to get too good too quickly. They couldn't handle me out there. <laughs> this is called idling, idling, right? Because you're not standing still. You're going forward and backward, forward and backward to protect yourself. <sighs> we want to lean forward into those changes, accept those new risks and responsibilities. Come on out here, Eddie. Accepting risks and responsibilities, even though they may be daunting. These are very real, folks. I have just upped my stakes. And what I'm telling you is I've upped my stakes, so up yours. <laughs> up your stakes. Up your purpose, because you need purpose to engage in something you perceive to be a little bit risky, a little bit of a stretch. Here the goal isn't just to make a catch, but more specifically, to catch the handle. <laughs> They're all unique. This one has double blades, and this one's heavy. You know what, my friends? I think we all can reach beyond our current levels of excellence. But in order to do that, you don't have to be balanced. You don't protect yourself against those opportunities. You embrace them. Embrace uncertainty with clear objectives, with clear targets, realizing it's just one thing at a time, just one moment, so be present where you are, and yet, you need to let go of the idea of balance <laughs> and grab onto living off balance on purpose. Thanks a lot. Yeah.